What's up, everybody? It's Jaggered again. Um, <laughs> you'll notice there's background music this time. Uh, this is Mega Ran's Apotheosis. Uh, it's from Journey, the game Journey, that beautiful, wonderful, magnificent game. Uh, I do have a playthrough of me playing through on it in a playlist on the YouTube. So you just check my playlist if you want to see my playthrough of the game, whether you've already seen it, know it, and love it, or if you've never heard of it. Uh, it's interesting to check out. Um, so check that out. This video um, is an Ask Jeg, and uh, it's about overcoming bad beats uh, specific to a work situation. So give me one second, sorry. My throat is very dry. Also, hold on. But anyway, I won't eat on stream, but I'll just drink while I'm talking. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I apologize, I look terrible, like I need a haircut. Uh, I was walking outside uh, to and from for the food place, so I look a mess because I just sat down and I was like, I wanna get these videos out for y'all. Um, the lighting is terrible, so like sometimes the light on me is good, other times I look like freaking Two Face, so you can't even see the other half of me. Um, so yeah, I'm sorry. The videos could be better quality, but I'm not at home, so. Um, and I'm so busy when I get back home, I just, um, I downloaded XSplit on my work laptop. <laughs> I'll uninstall it whenever uh, they tell me to. Um, just so I could do these videos for y'all. Anyway, so I got an email, and this person was like, Hey Jag, so I hope you can do a video. Um, they're not currently a Patreon supporter, but I don't have a whole lot of in, uh, Patreon members at the time. So when people send me info, questions and stuff, I'm definitely answering them for now. So for a little bit of time, if you don't want to support the Patreon but still want to send me an email for advice, that's cool. So um, I would prefer if you go through uh, the Patreon and do it that way. But, you know, until that grows, I'll take requests and help where I can if I have the time. So they wrote, anyway, they wrote and they were like, hey Jeg, um, you know, I'm having a hard time right now, I just got let go by my last job, and I don't really know what to do. So basically, you know, they're in a spot now where they feel uh, really beat up and don't know where to go. So to set the context to that. I'm not going to read the whole email because it was very long and involved, uh, but to, to sum it all up, there was a lot of work abuse in the workplace, and this was outside of the United States, so it was in a different country. So, um, you know, in the U.S., we have, I, I understand and know the laws about workplace harassment and all that stuff. Don't know what they are about in your country? Make sure you know them. Um, that's first and foremost piece of advice. In the country that you work, know your office laws against work um, abuse and know your government laws against work abuse because everybody is held accountable. So again, set the context. Um, they are in a different company or a different country and they work for a small co company. They left their last job and joined up on this one under the premise uh, that the person interviewing them needed someone under them. They let them know, hey, I don't have all the experience you're looking for, so, but hopefully, you know, this is what I can provide for you. Hopefully you still like it. The supervisor was like, you know, that's fine. I need somebody to groom. Great, cool, dandy. Come on in. They leave their last place, go into this place thinking it's a great opportunity. They can learn a lot. It's in the room they want to go to. They get in there, supervisor shows them how to do one portion of a full task one time and then sets them out to work with literally months of backlog to catch up on. And this backlog and this work has different nuances, there's different you know, procedures for certain things, there's certain codes for different things, none of the stuff they were taught. So of course they go back to the supervisor and like, hey, what is this code, what is this procedure, what does this look like, what does that look like? And they are responded with actual yells of, you know, the supervisor yelling at them for not knowing anything 
and asking them to think and figure it out for themselves, which if it's your first day on the job, there's literally no way you'd know. So, and this just continues on for a couple of months of just constant boss yelling at him, boss saying, kid can do better than this, you're not worth being paid, not paying them overtime, which is definitely illegal everywhere, um, as far as I know, and just being really condescending, even the people on, um, you know, in the other, in the office place, hear this, and like, yo, we're going to talk to the supervisor, to your supervisor about this, see if we can fix it, nothing happens. This person finally gets fed up, goes to the owner and says, look, this is what has been going on. I can't work in these situations, in these conditions. Can you help me out? I don't know if I can do it anymore. Supervisor goes, supervisor hears about this, fires this person. And so the supervisor tries to give lip service and, and, and make it, make themselves look good and, and just make it seem like, oh, it just wasn't working out, blah, 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 blah. So now this person who wrote is feeling really dejected um, because the last place they were at, they weren't at that long. At this place, they were only there for a couple of months. So now there's you know worries of how long it's going to take for me to find my next job. What's my resume going to look like? And with me only having these short-term job experiences, am I doing something wrong? Am I inadequate? Like they were in the abusive workplace for so long, it really made them question everything. Uh, so much so to the fact that they said they've really they've been recently looking for a job and they'll give their resume and the, the person they give it to will immediately just ask a small question and they're too afraid to respond because they've been conditioned and trained to just stay quiet and be fearful and they don't know what to do. And so now they're getting really stressed, they're getting full of anxiety, it's really beating them up, you know, it's tearing them up every day, they don't really know what to do. And so they ask me on my suggestions on what they should do. Um, and so I did, I talked to them, all that stuff, and, and they, they are happy, they're good, um, in that sense, in terms of me responding to them. But I wanted to do a video on it just to kind of cover it as well. Um, sometimes I'll email out if I feel the need to, if, if it's something that serious and that direct, just because I could tell the anxiety was so bad. They needed something immediately and not wait for a video, but I wanted to do this video for other people out there who might go through something similar in the future or might be going through it now. And it's like I said at first, make sure you understand your laws, uh, whether it's a small business or a large corporation in the country you're at, know how you can be protected as an employee. Um, that's number one. Number two, if you're in that position or have been in that position and, and you just feel beat up and all that stuff, it's like I told them. Don't let that bad beat get you down. And of course, it's easy for everyone to say, you know, just don't stress about it. Don't think about it and all that stuff. But I mean, I've been there. I have been fired from a job from a boss who was just as abusive to me and a quite a bunch of other people. And then they let us go like two weeks later. And I was only in that job for like a month. Um, and, and so it can be really, it can be really mentally debilitating to find yourself in that position and not know what to do. And so I just told them, I was like, you know, do your best at this point to find ways to try to flip it around. The situation is done. You're not there anymore. You don't have to be around them. So now it's time for you to get your swag back. And you know, they were hustling and hustling. They've been hustling, 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 trying to find jobs. And so, you know, my advice was to, hey, take a break, take a break. And, and that goes for, you know, anyone, like, if you're in that spot, if you just had a bad beat, you don't have to immediately get right back on that horse. You can take time, get your mind right first, because what's going to happen is if your brain is so beat up and you're trying to jump back on that horse so fast, you might just jump back on a horse and just fall off the other side, you know what I'm saying? So you got to be careful about that, you know, just take a step back, take some deep breaths, allow yourself to fully process that situation. Allow yourself to be angry. Allow yourself to be upset. You know, if you need to go hit up a, a you know a body bag, a punch bag. If you need to go cry, if you need to sing, you need to go dance. Whatever you need to do to channel that energy out in a positive manner, of course. Um, you know, get that out of you. Get that frustration out of you because it's gonna be there. We're human. We're gonna get mad. We're gonna get frustrated. You know, I'm, I'm dealing with a frustrating work situation right now. And I go home mad every day. And you know, it's, it's the same thing for me. I, I allow my time to be mad and then it's like, all right, well then what am I gonna do now? And that's the thing that you always have to think about is what are you gonna do 
now. Because um, at the end of the day, it's done happen. Your emotions are eventually going to fade. And then what do you do next? So take your time. Get your mind right. And then jump back on that horse. Because if you just think about the bad beat, think about the bad beat, think about the bad beat, then eventually it's just going to just kind of take you over. And what will end up happening is something I tell a lot of people is you will stress yourself to inaction. Um, and you don't want to stress yourself to inaction. Obviously, that is a bad thing. But it'll happen before you even realize it. You'll just keep thinking about it and keep thinking about it and be like, well, that frustrated me and they did this. And then that frustrated me and did this, that. And they made me feel like this. And I feel like this now. And now I don't know what to do. And you just, those thoughts are just going to swirl, 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 swirl. And then you're just going to stress yourself out. You're going to feel like you're too inadequate to do anything. You're going to feel like you're not worth anything. And that's what I had to remind them. I was like, this is not a blow to your confidence. It should not be. None of this was your fault. You stayed there way longer than you needed to. You were putting in an OT that you didn't even need to and you weren't even getting paid. And you still were trying to stick it out. You were doing everything right. So this is not a knock on your confidence at all. If anything, it shows your strength because you were trying to willing, be willing to put up with that for the benefit of what you're trying to do for yourself. So, you know, keep your confidence. Know that you're strong. Understand that, you know, it's gonna be a bad beat. And for this person in particular, it's really tough because it's the first bad beat that they had. And that first one is always the hardest, of course. It, it, it gets easier to a sense, but it's always, a bad beat is a bad beat. It's always gonna hurt. But that first time can feel devastating. And so, you know, that's, that's why I said take time off, because it's like you're, you're beat up, you got all this stuff in the back of your brain, you're questioning yourself. If you question yourself, how are you gonna be able to tell other people what value you can bring to them? You won't be able to. You can go to, you can put in all the resumes you want all the resumes you want. You can get interview after interview after interview. But if you have self-doubt, when you get in that interview room, if you haven't cleared up those old fears before, you're gonna choke or you won't be able to represent yourself as strong and as good as you can. And then they'll pass you up. So it's better to take that time, whether it's you know two days, whether it's two weeks, you know. Yeah, of course, as everyone can say, it's easy to take time off, but you got money, you got bills to pay. Everybody knows I've been there too. And I still had to do the same thing, you know, sometimes you just got to take two weeks. The jobs are going to be there. You know, there's not many occasions where taking a day away from a job hunt means you're going to miss out on a job that you could have had. Most places in HR are slow. They'll have job postings up all the time. They forget to take them down sometimes. So, you know, you can take a couple of days off to get your mind right. You can take two weeks off if you need to get your mind right. Then get up in there. And who knows, maybe that one that you applied for wasn't the one that you would have needed anyway. And you find something better because you calm down, you breathe, you can reassess the situation, you can rechart out your goals, you can remap everything you need to do. So, you know, bad beats come and go. I'm not doing a bad beat over every life situation right now, just specifically for this one in terms of a bad beat with a job. And then you just have to find ways, you know, like I told them, I was like, you gotta just find a way to spend this to the positive side. So, you, you know, some people choose not to put short work experiences on their resume. Other people choose to. Some say they put it as a contract. I'm not gonna tell you one way or the other how to make your resume. That's up to you. Uh, <laughs> you know, if it wasn't a contract and you write that it was a contract, yeah, that's that's your call. Um, but even if you put it on there, they'll ask. Yeah, but don't be afraid of them asking why the time was so short or why the time at your last place was so short if you bailed in on it early to try this venture. Let them know, I took a risk, I got in, this is what happened before I got in, it seemed great, I made that leap. I was trying to make something better for myself. Got in there, the place was hostile, it was abusive, all that stuff. Stuck it out as long as I could, this is what I dealt with, and then I was out. But this is what I learned while I was there, and this is what I can bring to you. I can bring this value to you. I know I'm stronger for those experiences. I've learned from them, and it's great. And you know, people like to hear how you bounce back. That shows resiliency, you know, that whole soft skill thing. I hate the term soft skills. Those are some of the most important skills to have. You wanna be able to show people that you can bounce back from a bad beat. You can show them that you can handle adversity and come back stronger. You know, they can always teach you whatever technology you're missing, or you can always learn with other, you know, I don't know how to do 
a specific X skill. You can always be taught that. It's hard to learn how to come back from a bad beat, and not everyone can do it uh, right away. So, you know, it's something you got to keep in mind, it's something you strive for, and just keep trying to get stronger every day. You know, and, and that's what I told them, and, and just let them know, like, hey, you know you're a rock star. You know you ball hard. Don't let somebody else try to steal your shine like that. You know what you can do, you know what you can bring to the table. Just because that person was a jerk doesn't mean you don't have any work. So, hold your head up, keep your eyes forward, keep moving, take the beats, take your downtime, and then do what you gotta do for yourself. And you'll be all right. And so, that's what that was about. So if you're dealing with that kind of a situation, you know, just kind of follow that advice. Just take some time for you. Don't jump back into the next thing too fast. Get your mind right, sort that other stuff out so you can push it to the side and then you can focus because it'll cloud yourself and it'll cloud what you do. But just don't let it get to you and don't let it think that you can't do anything anymore. And then don't stress about the future of what could be and what can't. You'll just stress yourself to inaction and then it'll happen. So take your time, get where you need to be, and then keep making it pop. So that's my advice on that. Um, feel free to leave the comments and critiques below. Uh, if you do have any questions for me or want any advice, then you can go to the Patreon and you can either set up a private life coach session with me. There's tiers for one session a month. There's tiers for two sessions a month. Um, if you can't afford those and you just want to have email, then there is a $10 level where pretty much how a lot of people on YouTube, they answer questions through email. Um, I do that there. The only reason why that I charge $10 for that is because I am a certified life coach, whereas most of these people are not. They're just giving their personal advice. Um, so, you know, that's a way where you can do that. And so what, the way that works is, is you send an email to me telling me your situation. I do a video just like this. Um, if I'm not busy, I will probably respond to you before I do a video, but I'll do a video here. As you notice, I keep it anonymous. I sum the email up, I don't read it word for word, I just take the situation, take some of the important context, and then give the advice that I share. So, um, that's a way you can kind of get some help uh, from me if you can't afford the higher tiers for a private session. Um, of course, until my Patreon box is really overflowing and I am too busy to uh, <laughs> do it for free, if you want to just send me an email now and, and you can get in touch with me, I'll do a video right now for you. So, for free. So, limited time offer, of course. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm here for y'all. So, make sure to check out. All the links are below. The last video did like three minutes of self promotion, so I'm not going to do it again. Y'all know I'm here. Y'all know what I'm about. You know, I have to take breaks in between here and there just because work travel or work gets crazy. But, and, but I'm here. So, if you need somebody, you got me. Thank you for watching. Uh, and I will see y'all around next time. So, but definitely check out Mega Ran. Uh, you can go to MegaRan.com, check out all his music. Again, this is Apotheosis from his uh, album, uh, the uh, Hip Hop Journey. Um, I'll have a link in the chat too for that. So check him out, check out all my stuff, like and share, and I'll catch y'all around.